So here are the three main things you need to understand when confirming any trade as an ICT trader. And it's going to be very, very simple. The first one, we've got market structure shift. Secondly, displacement. And thirdly, fair value gaps. Now getting straight into it, how can we actually use it in our trading? Now, the one thing you must understand is this. ICT uh, concepts are very broad, right? There's so many things that we can get into. But typically, this is the type of thing we're going to be looking at when we're confirming any trade. Now, what do we mean by actually confirming? There's two types of ways that you can actually enter in the market. Now, say, for example, we actually have this nice little supply zone over here. And then we are now pull, uh, pulling back up to this kind of area. There's going to be two ways that you can enter typically on the higher time frames. The first way is going to be setting a limit and then obviously aiming, for example, for the low. And then we simply just wait for it to get here. This is usually what a lot of smart money concept traders or even ICT traders do. Um, for example, when you're working um, a full time job and you can't really look at the markets all the time. However, if you do have time and you have got your eyes on the markets, I personally always recommend to confirm your trades. This is what I do and a lot of what other traders do as well. Usually when we get to these kind of areas, you need some kind of system that you can rely on. Now, again, when it comes to myself as well, these ideas come from ICT concepts, but obviously develop them, um, test them and really see, does it work for yourself? Now, usually what we're going to be doing as an ICT trader is this. We get to this kind of point of interest. We simply would wait for a lower time frame change of character, or let's just call it a market structure shift, as many people are calling it now. We look for that displacement, pull back to the fair value gap, and then an entry. Now, the one thing we must um, point out is this. A lot of traders get sort of tricked out by um, their analysis of market structure. Now, the one thing that I generally see people struggle with is this identifying what is a primary structural uh, what is a primary structural area and what is a secondary structural area now typically when we're looking at the high time frames this is a lot easier to understand and depict now the reason i say that is because of this when we are typically looking on the higher time frame a lot of the smaller moves are filtered out so as an example on the five minute chart this is what a one hour candle may look like but on the one hour chart this is simply what it will present itself as very very simple now, the one thing we need, uh, we need to understand is where do we have these primary structural highs and lows? Once these, gets, uh, these get breached with a market structure shift, that's when we start to look for entries. So we've just identified the first part of the ICT sort of triad that we start to look at is the market structure shift. As soon as we get that past primary high, we then look for the displacement typically with a body closure now this is in a way what defines my understanding from a lot of other traders as well is generally when we do look at displacements i like to look for a body closure the reason i say that is because it increases pretty much the win rate and again there are many times when you can simply just have um, a liquidity sweep of a certain kind of area or an inducement as many people would call it Therefore, you know, your understanding of the trend and where we're actually moving can actually get ruined. Now, the third part is going to be once we get this displacement, we are simply just going to be looking for the fair value gap and then finally enter. Now, let's go back to the point or the second point, the displacement over here. Now, why do we typically look for a body closure? Now, just getting into this very, very simple um, understanding over here. We have a market structure shift over here past this sort of downtrend, as you can see. Once we had this low, we had a nice little displacement to the upside. Now, usually what I'd look for is this body closure above the market structural high. As you can see over here, the body closes. It's not just a wick closure. Um, an example of a wick closure, for example, could be, let's just say over here, we have a high. And as you can see, it closes just with a wick. So it essentially what price does, it sweeps this liquidity just above over here and on the lower time frame, price sweeps it and then just drops downwards. As soon as we see this type of thing happening, especially on the high time frames, understand that you're most likely just going to get manip uh, manipulation off that zone. If that does happen, then we can start to look um, counter trend in a way and price does start to reverse. Once we get this displacement, what can we actually start to do is start to pretty much draw up our fair value gaps. Now, in this example over here, as you can see, we have got two fair value gaps that are formed. The first one is in this uh, 15 minute zone over here. As you can see, the wick of the previous candle and the wick of the candle afterwards as well. This gap in between is what we call the FEG. Again, 
a little example over here as well. Now, typically when this does happen, obviously it leaves you uh, it leaves you having to take a probability in a way. You know, are we going to react from the first zone? Are we going to react from the second zone? One way you can eliminate this is simply just to enter from the higher zone. Again, when it does come to that, you can't be over specific with your stop loss. So what I would usually do is enter on 50% of the fair value gap. As you can see over here, stop loss, I would do it enough just so that it covers both fair value gaps. The reason I say this is because many, many times you would see, even when you back this, uh, back test this entire concept, price could do something like this, it reacts from it, but then again, it still comes back down to this fair value gap. And so just a quick little side note for those of you that really want to take their trading to the next level. The one thing I always recommend to my students is backtesting and journaling. And the one place I personally use for all of this is Trader Edge. So this software gives you all the access to every single backtesting feature that you need, a whole strategy tester to allow you to put it into different libraries, a calendar, which I believe is actually one of the most essential tools to accurately track your trades and see your progress over time. And one of my personal favorites, the forward testing feature, which allows you to project how a certain strategy will do over time. So if you want to get started with this, click the link in the description to access one of the most trusted backtesting softwares there is available. So your market direction is probably correct, but you're going to get stopped out simply because you entered too early. Now, just moving back into some of the examples over here. Why do I look for that body closure? Because once we see a wick closure over here, many, many times price will simply just reverse. Another example of when we're looking for a body closure, and it's a very, very clear one as well. As you can see over here, what we'd be looking for in terms of price, we look for that market structure shift just down below. As you can see over here, a very, very nice displacement with a body closure below. As soon as this has happened, and let's just replay this for the sake of seeing what the candle structure looks like. As soon as this happened, let's just go into an even, an even more detail as well. As you can see, um, liquidity has just been swept before having that displacement downwards. Market structure shift just down below over here. And then as you can see, the displacement has been very clean. Typically what I would do at this point is I would draw up the fair value gap and you could even put a 50% off the fair value gap. As soon as that happens, entry over here, stop loss. You could leave it just above the fair value gap, but if you want to take it an even safer, appro safer approach, just simply leave it past the mar market structural high that has just been formed. Once that happens, typically what you'd usually look for is the first take profit is going to be at the low of the displacement. Once that does happen, as you can see, let's just quickly play price. Price comes back into the fair value gap, enters, and then all we look for is price to exceed this low over here. Again, like I've said, this is going to be your take profit one, but if we do get you know, some high time frame areas that we can look towards, and typically what I would say is usually we'd look for the most recent low. From that point onwards, we can aim for imbalances, we could also aim for structural lows as well. And this is typically, these are typically areas that are going to be aimed for. Again, one thing you must understand in the, as well is timing. If you are doing this on the lower time frames, and obviously that means that you are going to be trading intraday, typically um, once it gets to the end of London session, so around four or five o'clock in uh, London time, obviously convert that back to your times as well. Um, that's when we start to see price start to slow down. So just looking back at this one over here, to be honest, this was a London move, um, so I would have felt quite confident, you know, in just looking at where price actually does it continue towards. So obviously taking profits at nice little areas. Let's just see, does it go all the way down? All right, cool. So yeah, pretty much comes back, back down all the way to the imbalance and then yeah, starts to return. So guys, I hope I have kept that very, very simple. As you can see, ICT can, you know, especially when you're confirming your trades, can really be brought down to these three steps. Market structure shift, a clear displacement with a body closure, and then all we look for is that fair value gap for the entry. So guys, take care and I'll see you all in the next one.